short session. So my name is Gerd Bruder. I'm one of the posters and demos co-chairs here at SUI together with Daisuke Iwai, who's currently working behind the scenes to get everything running. So we are very happy that we have a total of 26 poster presentations here today, as well as five demo presentations. And in the following, each of the presenters will have a total of 60 seconds, so one minute, to uh, pitch you their ideas and in general to whet your appetite to come meet with them at their poster or at their demo and discuss all those great ideas with them in person. Of course, it's a great opportunity for everyone here to get to know those uh, very creative individuals that we have here at SUI and also to discuss their research, which is uh, uh, really exciting work. Um, so I encourage everyone of you to uh, attend um, the uh, posters and demo session, which will be directly after this fast forward session. Okay, and I also heard that we will probably have sake, so it should be a great event. So um, without further ado, um, I would say uh, let's start with our fast forward presentations. Uh, first, we will have the posters and then followed by the demos. So may I invite our first speaker here to the podium? Um, good afternoon. So uh, the work that I've been doing uh, with uh, Jennifer is uh, Mushi, which basically is just a fancy name we came up with. It's uh, phenomenology meets abstract theater. Uh, the principal idea was uh, to use modern technology like a Kinex uh, debt-based tracking and um, in real time using uh, processing, which is a Java wrapper IDE, to um, create brush strokes. So using CAP for matching techniques, which basically uh, uses uh, contour extraction to uh, create templates. We use that template and um, IDE's programmatic uh, generative uh, environment to create brush strokes that paints within a single uh, frame, which is uh, image in this case. Uh, we extrapolated this further into um, what we thought would be interesting using live video. So any frame that comes in as a video frame through it starts painting inside it. And um, the idea was to make it as abstract as possible and the brush strokes becomes more uh, erratic as you move a lot. And um, based on this, we found out that you know there's a lot of colors that you could play around with and um, it was interesting when we put this up as an experiential uh, installation up uh, back at uh, Arizona State University where uh, we could present this as, um, as, as, as a degree of uh, understanding how movement can affect a good degree of uh, colors and in interaction. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'd like to talk about AR desktop interface using our podcast system head one display. We propose a user interface that superimposes the virtual touch panel on real space and that allows the user, uh, the, the user to operate with a touch panel. The touch panel looks fixed on a surface of the table even while the user is looking around the table. The prototype system consists of the, an optical system head-mount display, an RGBD camera fixed on the head-mount display, and a desktop PC. We implemented two applications. A is documented editor. B is image viewer. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jung Hum Kwon from SHIK, South Korea. I'm really happy to introduce my recent research, which is about the coexistence space. Um, we developed a system for um, collaborative social interaction system. Um, which is uh, developed based in augmented virtuality environments. This system allows the user to communicate and collaborate with a bare hand interaction over the network. To generate the shared space, uh, the system in each side was configured HMD, RGBD sensor, motion suit, and haptic link as well. Uh, the following the techniques of uh, fingertip detection, camera calibration, blah, blah, blah. And it has been used for developing the spatial touch interface and implementation. So if you guys are interested in this project, please come and see at poster number three. Thank you. Good afternoon. The title of our poster is Development of a Toolkit Creating garment, Kinetic Garment Based on Smart Hair Technology. This is Project BioColor we made last year 
it is capable of kinetic movement and response to user's heart rate. Motion is an important element of textile expressions. For example, I think I'm not the only one here who really likes watching skirt blowing in the wind. But creating such kinetic garment is not easy for designers. It requires not only textile design skill, but also electronical and mechanical design skills, which designers are not familiar. So our research talks about developing a toolkit to solve this problem and encourage more designers to participate in this new design field. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, okay, our research is talking about a large-scale interactive AR display based on a projector camera system. Uh, actually, I believe everyone here uh, has seen a lot of uh, projection-based AR applications in recent years, uh, aka projection mapping. Uh, but most of this, uh, those applications are uh, uh, for uh, entertainment or exhibition usage. So what we are trying to do here is to introduce such kind of uh, uh, system into education field. Uh, so we built a large-scale projection system uh, at a school gymnasium. Uh, it is consists of uh, multiple projector camera systems and use the floor as a huge projection uh, surface. Uh, with, this, this is, uh, with this system, actually, you can uh, print uh, everything, uh, whatever you want, uh, onto the floor. So I believe it can uh, greatly improve the, uh, uh, the variation of uh, education activities. Uh, also, this, uh, this project is part of a uh, uh, new uh, research topic called uh, social imaging. So uh, if you are interested in that, we can also talk more about that. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Uh, hello. My name is John Sullivan, and I'm here to present TikTok Ray. Uh, TikTok Ray is a uh, raycasting-based interactive inter technique for uh, smartwatches and a uh, uh, smartphone-based uh, head-mounted displays. It uses a smartwatch as a uh, pointing device. So, um, mo mo As you know, it's hard to uh, track a device in a 3D space with just an IMU. So instead, we implemented a uh, pointing method uh, with fixed origin uh, ray casting. Uh, the difference from uh, regular ray casting is that instead of uh, using a ray with an arbitrary origin, uh, we use a ray with a uh, fixed point. In this case, it's uh, on the elbow. Uh, with this, we can just use the smartwatch's orientation of the gyroscope uh, to have smooth raycast space interaction. Uh, the user can rotate their elbow to uh, move the ray and uh, intersect a target. To confirm the target, they uh, simply rotate their wrist clockwise. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about this, uh, we have a uh, demo and poster. Uh, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Mayra Barrera from Simon Fraser University, and I'm presenting 3D camera pose history visualization. And I have a couple of questions for you. Do you like 3D virtual environments, or do you like, or do you use 3D CAD systems, or are you just a 3D fanatic, and have you felt lost in a 3D environment, or do you spend a lot of time going back to views that you find useful, or do you need? Then, Please visit my poster where I'm presenting a new interface that lets navigate 3D environments in a more efficient way by going back to previous camera poses. Thank you. Hello, I'm Chun Sung Shin from uh, Korea Electronics Technology Institute. The title of my poster is about the social spatial measure for place and object based information sharing. So as you know, it is very important to share information in 3D space. So the, for this purpose, we are proposing social spatial measure for information sharing. So for this purpose, our measure model real space 
and then allow user to share information, allocate information in the space. With the, so for we implement, we, we, our method is based on the lo, uh, 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 simultaneous location and mapping and, and the technology, and then we applies, we share the information over the cloud. So we, we implemented our, the, our measure based on the Google Project Tango device, and then we tested the, the, our ma method and the, in a small office environment. So please come to our poster to see the details about our measure technology. Thank you. Uh, we have developed a real-time sign language recognition system. The system follows a end-to-end uh, -end framework instead of the step-by-step -step one, uh, so that it can avoid error accumulation problems. And also, we extract the high-level features instead of the low-level ones. Uh, and also, we have proposed a new training scheme called the Training with Guidance so that we can train the network with uh, limited training data. Uh, we not only claim the high recognition speed, but also the high accuracy uh, over the state-of-the-art uh, systems. And this is our system framework. Our system has two inputs. One is the trajectory feature, and the other is the row handshape images. And it outputs the recognition results directly. Thank you. Hi, uh, we present a window shaping, a mobile and markerless mixed reality interface for creative 3D design interface. So we introduced a tangible in-situ design workflow, which enables uh, interacting with the physical environment in context. So with our application, users can perform a 3D design exploration with the actual physical world around, for example, like we can add uh, 3D modeling with uh, existing furniture like sofa and desk. And in overall, we offer a capability of uh, 3D design explor exploration by creating on, borrowing from, and looking at the physical world. So if you have any feedback or question, please come and visit our poster. Thank you. Good afternoon. I will be presenting Know What Midfield Sense Making for the Visually Impaired. Uh, during an uh, unstructured series of interviews, we, one of the problems we identified for visually impaired people is that they are unable to uh, learn new spaces effectively, and these new spaces can be things like offices. So it takes them uh, up to six months to learn a large building. So we, um, we used uh, fiducial markers placed on objects in a room, and uh, we use uh, real-time 3D spatial audio to place virtual sound sources at the locations of the tags. Um, so, uh, and um, we detect the cam detect the tags using a wide field of view fisheye lens camera. Um, so, the results based on um, usability test with four subjects is that uh, spatial audio information was almost immediately intuitive. Uh, one issue was that uh, large objects needed more effective representation of the extent, um, and uh, users can learn the layout of a room even with uh, very imprecise HRTFs, and um, users, uh, users are very concerned about the prototype being indicative of disability, and um, visually impaired people do not track objects through head movements, so um, if you place a cup in front of them and move the cup, they won't track the object with their with their head. They will just follow it internally using the uh, oral system. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Paul from Tokyo Metropolitan University, and uh, I'm presenting our app Katsukazan, which shows uh, information regarding volcanic activity in Japan in near real time, and it uses data from the National Institute of Informatics, which is actually in this building. So currently, uh, information that's available uh, digitally is uh, not presented very well, and it lacks the kind of interactivity that people are used to from mapping applications. Uh, so we've therefore built this app, and uh, 
initial user tests have been very positive, um, and we're now in this uh, process of uh, including crowdsourcing data, and we're looking at um, some mixed reality methods as a way of doing that. And it's a free download from the App Store, so feel free to download it. Thanks. Hello, I'm Marie-Lise Bourguet, but I'm really here on behalf of uh, Xiao Jieza, who was one of my under, undergraduate students on the Queen Marie and BUPT joint program in, in Beijing. So uh, that's uh, an undergraduate project. Um, what it, so what you did is trying to detect pointing gestures in recorded lectures using Kinect data. And the motivation for his work was that it's been shown, previous research has shown that when lecturers point uh, during lectures, it means that what they're saying at that time is very important. So the idea is if we can detect those pointing gestures in, in video lectures, then we could be able to summarize lectures, we could be able to drive avatars and replace the lectures with uh, avatars that perform interesting gestures in relation to the, uh, to the speech of the lecture. And the methodology uh, is followed is this. So we recorded a number of lectures using Kinect, and then he analyzed the, uh, the data. He uh, annotated the data and tried to see uh, what uh, small and easily uh, detectable gestures the lecturers are actually doing while pointing. Um, the idea is that these component gestures should be uh, easy to detect from the uh, Kinect data using straightforward calculations. He analyzed the frequencies of those gestures when they were done in isolation, were they done part of a, of a pointing gesture, and then he came up with this magic formula you see at the bottom that calculates weights uh, for those di different component gestures uh, and that allow him to detect quite successfully all the, de the pointing gestures in the Kinect recorded data. So if you want to know more about this magic formula, then you come and see me at the poster, in the poster room. Thank you. When you put on your arm on a table, uh, the, uh, the area, will be being uh, heading sorry when you put, uh, place your arm on a table there will be an area where, where is the heading behind and in this study we highlight this, this area and call it the heading uh, uh, area since the area uh, cannot be seen by others so oh, we think it's very suitable for 100 personal uh, information and uh, uh, has potential has to solve some of the security problem that exists in the tabletop system. You know, we often place uh, our arm on a table. Uh, this section is very natural. Uh, so if you do this section on a tabletop to check your information, uh, it's less likely to be noticed, uh, please come to our booth and discuss with our boss secrets. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Benjamin Utrum and I'm from uh, Keio University. Um, uh, yeah, so we're, we're moving into a, a world where more and more people are going to be consuming media using head-mounted displays, and at the same time, more and more media is being captured in full 3D. Um, the problem is, how are we going to navigate those 3D environments and experience them with HMDs when, you know, using joystick makes you feel sick and, um, you know, running around your living room is going to make you jump, bump into walls. So um, I am presenting one solution, which is to use an orbital technique um, in virtual environments. Um, so essentially... Uh, your, if you orbit around things, then you can, you can ob observation and navigation tasks are quite nice, but it, it limits you to, if you're on a sphere, it limits you to just two degrees of freedom. So in order to make a six degree of freedom um, navigation strategy using an orbital technique, we um, use some elegant mathematics uh, where we d do uh, navigation on the surface of a torus and uh, con control the, ra the radii of the torus to be able to navigate to um, any location. Um, and it can be applied to 3D navigation, sports, and gaming, and storytelling. So if you're interested, um, please come to poster number P15. Thank you very much.
Hi, everybody. My name is Abe Agarwal. Um, so our project is called Know How. Um, I know it uh, has a different subtitle in the uh, um, pamphlet. Um, sorry about that. Um, so it's Near Field Multimodal Sense Making for the Visually Impaired. So what we've created is a gesture-based uh, smart belt interface that allows visually impaired people to receive audio assistance when they pick up or grasp objects. Uh, many objects in the uh, real world are uh, ambiguous in the tactile domain. Um, we decipher them using text, color, uh, and other features that are only available to sighted people. Uh, so for example, a box of juice or a box of cookies. Um, so we've provided uh, verbal assistance to aid in recognizing those objects. And you can see a couple of our successful um, verbal assistances uh, on screen right now. Uh, we also tested it against uh, widely used tools in this domain. Uh, so uh, that the tool that we compared against is called TapTapC. It's a smartphone app that lets you point your camera at an object and receive um, audio assistance. It'll tell you what that object is. So uh, our gesture-based interface uh, performed better over this uh, comparable interface uh, in both accuracy, um, amount of objects correctly verbalized, um, and the speed at which it's able to verbalize those objects. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. I am Jane Huang from the Korea Institute of Science and Technology. Um, in our work, we have made a smartphone-based 360-degree video player that uses work-in-place interface to control the playing speed of the video. We have implemented a, um, an accelerometer-based real-time statistics algorithm that has the latency less than 500 milliseconds. Our algorithm is also able to determine the stepping speed of the user. So if the user steps faster, the video plays faster. If the user steps slower, then the video plays slower. If the user stops, he's stopping, then the video is paused. So we have evaluated our work through a user study and found that uh, when users use, uh, use our work in place interface, they feel less simulated sickness symptoms as compared with the um, traditional player. In order to experience our system, please come to the poster 17. Thank you. Hi, I'm Edwin from the University of Calgary. So I'm here to present a uh, framework for connecting devices in a spatially uh, aware environment. So currently we're surrounded by all these devices like phones, tablets, laptops, projectors, and a natural way to interact with all of them is proxemic interactions. For example, if I have my slides on my phone and I want to put it on the projector, I can just point at it and just flick at it. To do all of these interactions, we need to know the positions and orientations of all the people and the devices in the environment. So with existing frameworks that do this, they use external sensors like cameras to track all the positions of the devices. However, uh, these external sensors like cameras can be very difficult to place or calibrate, they can be very expensive. And furthermore, there's the occlusion problem where if someone walks between myself and a sensor, I'm no longer being tracked. So we present a new framework. We use internal sensors, for example, uh, area learning devices like Project Tangle. They use internal sensors in your phones and your tablets, and they can track their own positions. So we eliminate the occlusion problem, and we also make it much more easier to deploy these connected spatial environments. Thank you. Hi again. Uh, Mokobit 1 was presented earlier this year at HCI International Canada, so Mokobit 2 is an extension of the same concept. Instead, of, we just modified the gamified system into a uh, more tangible uh, concept where Granger causality can be involved. Uh, Granger causality basically is uh, used in stock markets where it just tells that if a stock market can affect uh, the values of another stock. So this was never implied towards movement per se until recently and right now. Uh, the idea was use motion capture systems to detect a movement in a uh, constrained space amongst users. And uh, based on that, if we could uh, derive uh, any um, influential uh, information which determines uh, behavioral patterns amongst users, where one movement can cause and affect another one. Um, the, the, the graph over here represents user one against uh, two, three, and four, where all the green lines of the three of these graphs are user or particular user charted against uh, the other users in a particular time frame. Uh, you can notice that user two is closest to user one in this, uh, sorry, user three is closest to user one. The second graph is as similar as it gets to imply that 
that user had the most effect in that moment in space. Um, the, the use of gamification uh, creates correlation between a point, its Euler angles, and quaternion rotations. And this in turn can, um, so this is the wireframe that we, I was using, and this in turn gives us an idea of what's going on. If I could quickly just jump and So this is a small idea of how people are running around in space and making a fool of themselves, but that's that. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Chu yong -woo. Uh Today I present this poster. Uh, in virtual reality, a uh, block game such as Minecraft, which can interact with a uh, highly occluded uh, objects have emerged. To interact with a highly object, occluded object by usual hands, uh, selecting target is an important task. So we propose the uh, selection method based on the special relationship uh, among the occluding objects. Uh, this one is the special relationship, so I will explain this detail in post section. Uh, the proposal method is compared with the ray casting method. As you can see, uh, the right video, there are many trial error due to the disambiguation, uh, disambiguity issue. However, the, as you can see, the right video, the user can easily select the target object in occluding object. So if you have any question, please visit the uh, P20 section. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sogyal Kim from Kaist in Korea. My work is about haptic interaction with uh, telepresence systems. Uh, interaction with remote environments has been challenging due to many reasons. So. Uh, to provide more intuitive and immersive feeling of distance object, we generate haptic signals from both uh, physical constraints and human guidance. With our method, uh, the user can touch the faraway things shown in the live video streams, and the remote helper can provide some hint for interaction to the user, uh, with, uh, like holding hands. We welcome your questions and comments for our research. See you at the first session. Thank you. Hi, all. Uh, I'm Paul from the University of Hamburg. And, well, the average human blinks their eyes about 15 times a minute. Feel free to count. Um, and while previous re research has shown that you can do redirection during uh, saccades, you know, due to change blindness, um, we propose using uh, eye blinking for this purpose. And if you want to find out how this research is going, you know, just visit us. Having the ability to fly has been one of the most ancient human dreams. And as technology advances, we are able to fly not only in planes, but we are also able to experience individual flight. In our work, titled A Multimodal Embodied Interface for Levitation and Navigation in a 3D Space, we explore the question, what kind of interaction techniques can be used to achieve an embodied control navigation? We look up into different input modalities, such as brain and muscle activity, head movement, pressure on a garment, and also body movement. We use this sensor data to map to a navigation command. This navigation command was used to drive a carbon motion base where, from which a person was hanging. With this uh, motion base, they could move around a 3D space in a large virtual environment. Uh, using this system, it is possible to, to enable a person to fly at their own will. If you have any, any questions or you want a more detailed explanation, please visit Poster 23. Thank you very much. Good 
afternoon. My name is Sydney Pratt. I'm from the University of Calgary in uh, Alberta, Canada, despite what my name tag says. Uh, who here has seen the Iron Man movies? Pretty much all of us, right? How many of us have watched Tony Stark move and interact data and want to do the same thing? Right? So I'm here today to present uh, our early work, Aquario, a tangible spatially aware tool for information interaction and visualization. Um, information visualization is always looking for new ways to explore data sets and gain new insights. So Aquario um, is a new way to view data and uh, it uses an old technique called the Pepper's Ghost Effect. Uh, personal cubic displays enable the user to interact with the information visualizations using proximity, gestures, um, tangible objects embedded with NFC tags. Aquario allows users to get their hands on the data in the hopes that one day um, we'll be like Tony and have our holograms. Come visit my poster if you want more information. Thank you. Afternoon, everybody. Uh, so, have you, so the next time that you actually do any mid-air gesture design and you're wondering, I wonder what the user would prefer in terms of doing selection, don't worry. We have you covered. Check out poster 25, and we can talk about the difference between, well, that's not mine. <laughs> there it is, between grasp, grab, and pinch to see which one the user would prefer when doing mid-air gestures. Thanks. OK. Uh, I'm, uh, hello. Uh, I'm Hiroshi Hosobe uh, from Hosei University, Tokyo. Uh, we propose a hand gesture-based uh, spatial interaction method for biometric authentication. Uh, this method uh, supports 3D gestures uh, that allow the user to move his her hand without touching an input device. And uh, we uh, implemented this method and conducted uh, experiments with nine subjects. And the results indicate the method uh, almost, almost always distinguished their uh, gestures. In fact, uh, we calculated uh, a performance index called uh, the error, equal error rates, and uh, we found that these rates are good enough. So we concluded that uh, it's difficult for users to imitate other users' gestures. Thank you. Hello. We develop a mixed reality carving system. In our system, you can enjoy a virtual wood carving on the actual wood surfaces by using a chisel device. As you do so in the real world, you can change the carving stroke depending on your movement of the chisel and the pressure, pressure force to the surface. Also, you can choose the chisel type. We propose a skewed there, a bridge there, a gouge, and a stretch there. By repeating these operations, you can make an original artwork. Please come to our demo booth and enjoy a mild wood carving. Thank you. Oops. Hello, everyone. My name is Chesky Rath, and I'm from Parsons School of Design, New York. I'm currently working with Verizon uh, in their Open Innovation Department. I'm here to present Sticky. Sticky focuses on sticky note exercises that we do with papers. Uh, but we know that in a work environment, collaborations are difficult. All the sticky note, paper-based collaborations, they need real estate. They're always local, and they're always difficult to share. So this research creates a pocket-sized solution, which is a smartphone application that allows you to create notes on your smartphone. Uh, take them, walk up to like any ordinary screen in your workspace and paste it up there. Uh, I'll be happy to demo this project next uh, conference room. Please stop by and say hello. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Jun Wei Sun from Simon Fraser University. My demo is shift sliding and depth pop for 3D positioning. So these are two techniques designed for the mouse uh, for 3D positioning. 
uh, with depth pop, we can map mouse wheel actions to all the possible object depths, ob object positions in depth, uh, where the objects are in contact, visible, and collision free. Uh, with shift sliding, we extend sliding to floating and colliding objects. Um, so this is also a context de dependent manipulation, well, based on the last contact of the object. Um, here's, a, here's a video of the user using our system. All right, uh, so if you want to learn more details, I welcome to my demo and also my talk uh, tomorrow morning at 11. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Mikel Salazar and I am here to present you our demo uh, of OpenUIX, a framework that, thanks to its simple but powerful user interface description language, enables user experience designers to easily create advanced interaction spaces. In this demo, you will be able to experiment with the built-in editors of the framework, and after that, you can download an experimental AR browser created with OpenUIX and use it to access uh, several experiences that we have created across the conference venue, uh, including um, a poster index and a comment system. Additionally, this browser will enable you to access several experiences outside the Hito Subasi Hall, including a navigation system to the nearest shelters in case of an emergency, and a simulation for the 2020 Olympics base on our framework. Thank you. Hello everyone, so before I present on the uh, technique of TikTok Ray, so now I'll present on the demo. TikTok Ray is a spatial interaction technique that uses a smartwatch, in that uses a smartwatch input device for smartphone-based virtual reality. To demonstrate application of TikTok Ray, we implemented an open source clone of Minecraft and virtual reality. TikTok Ray allows the user to select, place, or destroy Minecraft blocks. To place a block, the user points at the intended location of the block and rotates the wrist clockwise. To destroy a block, a user points at the intended block and rotates the wrist counterclockwise. To select block types, the user will point to the uh, empty space and rotate the wrist to toggle selection. We made, we made the implementation of TikTok Ray and the VR version of the Minecraft game available as open source on GitHub. If you'd like to try TikTok Ray for yourself, please come to our demo. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I have another quick announcement. Um, so we don't only, only have those five demos, which you've seen in the previous. Um, we also have a couple more demos presented by our esteemed sponsor, NS Solutions, which have their booth directly outside of this conference hall. So NS Solutions, they have more than 10 years of experience in AR technologies, so they have a couple of great demos out there, and they're looking forward to seeing you all uh, at the demo booth. Uh, booth. So... Um, yeah, this uh, concludes our posters and demos fast forward session, but actually the posters and demos session is just starting. And uh, we've just heard that uh, well, pointing is very important in lectures, so let me point you to our posters and demos which are located directly outside here on the left side. So please follow the authors to their uh, great work presented as a poster or as a, as a demo, and please uh, use this time to mix and mingle to talk to the, these very creative uh, uh, individuals out there and um, to uh, get to know their research, etc. So this concludes our session, so thank you everyone.